Hello, my friends. This is the art of prepping. So I've been thinking about like car camping, uh, tent camping, just getting out there and some of the supplies and gear that you may want to have. Um, everybody's a bit different. Obviously, there's a lot of things that people like to do that other people don't. So it's going to vary what you want to bring with you. But I was thinking mostly of like the essentials and maybe just a little bit beyond. And so I, I put together a list uh, just to make it interesting. I kind of mixed up the list so it's not just in categories, but it's kind of more like random um, in terms of how I'm going to approach this video. Once again, just to make it kind of a little bit more interesting. So I am not actually a person that goes out camping very much. I'll just put that out there. And I know a lot of people are like that. You know, there's a lot of people who enjoy camping, but they just don't do it very often. And what I have done in, in recent years, more so than actually going camping in a tent, is to what I would call like car camp. And I've done that a few times in the last few years. Um, and what's kind of funny is that I, I've, I didn't go anywhere. Um, I literally just took my vehicle and parked it behind my house right there on the edge of the woods and basically just car camped. You know, uh, I don't do that very often at all, but it, it is something that it's kind of fun. Um, <laughs> to put it bluntly, I, I actually enjoy that. Um, now, I have a very small sport utility vehicle, and so it, it, it's a little bit cramped for me, um, but I do throw down the front passenger seat and it's just just large enough that I can lay out and, you know, and, and you know, camp out, if you will. And so what I do is I, I crack the windows about an inch or two and that allows me to get fresh air. But it also allows me to hear all of the the noises, all the sounds of nature Um so where I live, there's a lot of activity at night. It's like the, the night here is very, very active. It, it's, it's completely different than during the day. And yes, during the day, you see wildlife and there's all kinds of noises and you see birds, deer, and there's dozens of other animals that move around on the property here. But at night, it's just extremely loud. And it, it's just like everyone wakes up. And everybody's moving about and doing things. And, and it's um, it's really kind of shocking how many animals are more active at night than during the day. And I'm not saying that they're all nocturnal, but there's a lot of activity at night. I can tell you that. And uh, so, you know, the first few times I did this, it was a little bit overwhelming just because it was so loud, <laughs> and I, I virtually, well, basically, I, I didn't get almost any sleep uh, the first night um, because it's so loud. Um, but I've gotten a little bit used to it. And now um, when I'm sleeping in my house, I typically keep the windows open. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not for everyone, uh, but I do enjoy that. And so, of course, this only goes on typically during the summer and part of fall that I keep the windows open in the house. But um, otherwise, you know, uh, I, I just really enjoy the car camping and yeah. So, you know, you don't have to just go somewhere, right. And, and pitch a tent, um, you know, or camp in a vehicle somewhere. You can, you can just stay where you're at. I mean, if you have a little bit of land or if you have some woods you might want to take advantage of it. So anyways, uh, I, I just wanted to go over a basic list here of some, you know, supplies and gear that in particular that I really like to have when I car camp. But it's also very handy as well uh, when I do camp with a tent, which for me is very rare. I don't really do that hardly at all. Uh I mean, I do have tents and all that. And it, it, it's, it's fun. It really is. You know, it's fun to have a campfire and all that. Um, but I just, just to be, you know, completely blunt and realistic, 
you know, I think it's just the older I get, the more lazy I get when it comes to all that. Because it takes time to put up a tent and then you got to take it down and, you know, to build a fire and, to, you know, and then to clean it all up. And it, it's uh, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. Um, it just sometimes to car camp is even more fun for me because it's just a lot less hassle, you know. And I know a lot of people don't look at camping in a tent or camping in a tarp as a hassle. Um, but for me, it's just more enjoyable to car camp. And literally I can just load the car up, you know, just park the car in front of my house and just walk out there and just load it up. It only takes a few minutes to do that. And then I can just drive behind my house on the edge of the woods. And then, <laughs> and then I'm done. <laughs> uh, everything is in the vehicle that I need. And so I just simply transition my body from being in the driver's seat to the back of the vehicle. And my vehicle has fold down seats. So uh, the front passenger seat uh, folds down and the back seats. So basically, I just fold them all down uh, beforehand and just load it up. And, and that's how it works. So uh, real quick here, though. I know I'm a little long winded in in the beginning or the first half here of the video, but I just want to run through now some of the uh, the gear. So uh, sun protection, uh, it's a big deal. You know, um, it just depends on where you're at and what time of the year. Sometimes it's just a little bit of sunscreen maybe is all you need or maybe a sun hat. You know, uh, it, it can be very simple. A hygiene kit, whatever, whatever that means to you. Like, for example, like uh, I, I like to keep like wet wipes, you know, even if it's just a, an overnighter. I just like it, you know, and of course your toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, dental floss. Um, you don't have to go overkill with all this, but, you know, just your basics. And then um, any kind of uh, medication. You know, there's a lot of people who take medication, unfortunately. And uh, sometimes it's just over the counter meds, like for allergies. Some for some people, though, it could be something a lot more serious, like heart medicine. And you don't want to just be out over the weekend and not have your meds. Um, of course, you know I, I should probably just preface ahead of time here. You should definitely let people know where you're going, especially if you're by yourself. But even if you're with other people. You should tell another group where you're going in case something happens to you and your group. I mean, it, it's happened before. Things happen. So um, a change of clothes is always awesome. Don't forget your rain gear. I mean, even if you're going to be inside your vehicle pretty much the whole experience, which that kind of is a bit boring. But some people like to go somewhere and just car camp overnight. And then they leave, you know, the next day or whatever. Um, I mean, that's that's cool, I guess. Um but if it's raining outside and you need to go outside and relieve yourself, well, you need rain gear. So that's necessary. Um, a notepad and a pencil or pen. I, th I think it pretty much goes without saying that it's just good sometimes to have the ability to, to jot down thoughts or notes or, you know, sometimes, you know, you might have a little bit of time on your hands or you're just kind of chilling in your vehicle or in your tent, and then something that kind of pops in your mind and you don't want to forget. So this is cool uh, to have something that, to write it down. Uh, games and books. You know, I know a lot of people watch movies when they go camping, but I try not to turn my phone on. In fact, a lot of times, if I'm just car camping, I'll especially at my own house or my own backyard, <laughs> if you will, I'll purposely leave the phone in the house. You know, just turn off the phone, leave it in the house and and then go car camping. Um, so that's just what I do. Uh, another uh, optional thing here, you know, for some people is a solar charger for a battery bank. You know, if you are going to a more re remote location or if it's going to be more than maybe just like an overnighter, you may want, you know, additional power. OK, and then, um, you know, a garbage bag, a cooler, especially if it's going to be more than just an overnight situation. A cooler can be very helpful. But, you know, for me personally, if it's just like overnight, just a few snacks or something will get you through. It's not a big deal. You know, um, what else here? Uh, a lighter in case you do want to, you know, get a fire going. 
And of course, you may need a, a folding saw so that you can procure um, a bit of firewood, especially if you just want that campfire to cook on or just have the light, or, you know, for light or heat or to keep wild animals away, especially if you're, you know, tent camping. But if you're in a vehicle, you don't probably have the same need for a campfire, you know, otherwise. Um, in terms of other things, you know, I'm just going to run through some other ideas here. Duct tape in case you need to make a repair or something because things break at the worst time. Um, multi tools, you know, like just get a, a good full size multi tool. You don't have to carry it on your person, but you can just keep it in a pouch or a pack or something in the vehicle or even in the console of your vehicle. Um, if you're, you know, actually like in a tent, you know, then you can just keep your multi tool. Uh, in a in a belt sheath on your person, but you know you could also just keep it in your backpack. Uh, you also have like um, like light, you know, needs. You know, like a lantern or a headlamp or a handheld light. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I think that a lantern is kind of like the overall better, you know, uh, choice. And, and then the next is a is a headlamp, in particular for car camping. Um, but just make sure your headlamp has a lower option, you know, like settings or modes. Some headlamps are just like on or off and they're just like bright or off. <laughs> it's like like blinding or nothing. And so like I like lights that you can switch down to a lower level so it doesn't just like blow your eyes out. Um, a radio. I try not to really use a radio, but like. If you're in a remote location, it is nice to have a radio in case like a really bad storm front comes in to, just to get some weather information. Uh, but some people like to kind of play in the background a little bit of music. And, you know, that's that's cool. Um, a portable fan, you know, like a battery powered fan. I mean, it's just kind of more of a luxury. But if you're car camping in particular or maybe for some people, even tent camping, uh, they like to have a little bit of air circulation, you know, air movement. And um, and so it can help uh, to make things more comfortable. Uh, a camp towel. Right. And I think those are really handy, just like an oversized camp towel or a microfiber towel. That's what I typically use a shovel. You're like, well, what would you use that for? Well, to put out your fire. Right. Um, if you have a campfire and also if you need to use the bathroom out in, in the nature, you know, you can dig a little hole, you know, like a latrine or something, and you can cover up your waste. Um, a camp chair, especially if you're like camp, you know, camping with the, like a or using a tent, um, you know, tent camping, I should say. Uh, just a really lightweight, foldable like camp chair. Like I have a few that are awesome. Um, just check out my playlist. Uh, a dry bag really is great. Um, really does help to protect well, gear and food, you know, from moisture, uh, that's really underrated, uh, a GPS or a map. If you're in a remote location or a location, you don't know much about if you're just car camping in your backyard or, you know, in your local woods, you don't really need a GPS or map, of course, uh, first aid kit. And my, my philosophy on this is that, you know, the further you are from your home, the more, first aid and trauma supplies you should probably have so if you're just camping in your backyard probably a boo-boo kit is probably all you need but if you're in the remote wilderness you know bring it all um if you if you're gonna bring a pet with you like your cat or your dog which some people like that um you know obviously bring what you need for them um, if you are with other people or if you have a family and you have kids, obviously, you know, you have to plan accordingly. Um, so, you know, these are things that um, you're going to know. It's going to be obvious, you know, um, but, uh, you know, you're going to really have to plan ahead in particular, though, for the food and water. And I would always go a little bit overboard with the food and water especially if you're going to be like in a remote location, you know, it's always better to have more food and water than not uh, because that can be kind of a serious thing in particular with the, the water. You can always skip a few meals or even go a few days without food and not have too many complications. Um, but it's a really serious issue if you don't have enough water, but of course that's common knowledge. Um, a whistle 
and maybe some other type of safety device or some kind of a a tension getting device if you're camping somewhere in a remote location just in case of an emergency. Uh, Some people like to even bring a pack of flares or whatever. Um, That's up to you. Uh, Self-defense. You know, now, even when I car camp behind my house, (laughs) I still um, am very safety minded because you never know, you know, wild animals. You you might like exit your vehicle. And, you know, I mean, in my area, there's there's like dangerous animals. Okay, they could really hurt or kill you. So, you know, have a means to protect yourself. And of course, if you're in a location that you don't really know much about, not just the wildlife is an issue. But humans could be as well. So there's always criminals lurking in the darkness. And the chances of you having a real problem, you know, camping is probably very low in most locations. But once again, it just depends on where you are. Uh, Cordage. Cordage is a really good thing to have as well. And once again, I know I'm jumping around. I'm bouncing pretty crazy here. But it it, it is something that... um, I think that a good hank of parachute cord or bank line, it's kind of like borderline essential if you're tent camping or especially if you have like a tarp. Um, But it really isn't that big of a deal, though, for like if car camping. Um, But some people like to take cordage and make a little ridge line so that they can do things outside of their vehicle and kind of put a tarp up against the side of their vehicle or a sunshade or hang things inside the vehicle. Um, Basically, you know, there's different ways to do this, but you can take cordage and, and just attach the cordage to different parts of your vehicle and make little ridge lines or hanging lines, whatever. Um, and, And it can be very handy. Uh, So anyways, uh, some people like to actually go one step further when they car camp and black out the vehicle when they go to sleep because just in case someone wants to look in or they just want privacy and it's understandable. So, you know, there's different ways to black out your vehicle from the inside. You can have some makeshift curtains, but that's kind of complicated. What a lot of people do is just they get a little bit of tape. And you kind of have to experiment of what tape works best for you so it doesn't cause, you know, problems, you know, um, like difficulty removing it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can basically just tape some pieces of fabric over the windows. Uh, You can use the vehicle sunshades that you can find even at the dollar store. Uh, Basically, you can find some ways to just to cover the windows. It's really not that big of a deal. I know people who even just use pieces of cardboard and they just kind of just fit the cardboard. They cut the cardboard to shape. So it kind of just fits into the space Um, and the spaces that don't really allow for a friction fit. They can just tape a couple of the corners to hold the piece of cardboard. So anyways, there's all kinds of cool things about this, but sometimes it's just really fun to get out of the house. And these are just some ideas of gear. So you guys enjoy yourself out there. You guys have fun. Thanks for checking the video out. You guys take care. Catch you later.